Hello, hello, this is Steve D of the YYT for yet another Deck Tech Talk. Today, something of an update or an alternative list for Kingsglaives. For anyone who is unfamiliar, briefly, Kingsglaives are an unusual deck that lets you cash in your break zone of discarded cards to pull extra threats out of your deck by removing certain job Kingsglaives in your break zone from the game. This happens to be an excellent supplement to our new Legend X-Death, a card I'm slightly obsessed with because it's incredibly powerful when timed right, incredibly hard to play around, instills a real sense of obligation, and also it's just really entertaining and uh, very satisfying to pull off. X-Death does remove both break zones from the game when he enters the field, but the ability to proactively use up your break zone first means that you feel like you're losing out a little bit less. There's also a problem X-Death faces where if you play a copy too early to remove some cards from the game, it can be quite hard to remove even more cards from the game without repeating X-Death's on entry effect. And that is something that Nyx can get around by mailing single cards out of the game to get plus 1k a piece. So why play this deck over the Earth Lightning one I previously shared? There are a few reasons. The Earth Lightning deck had to play very particular and kind of odd summons simply for the sake of balancing colours. Also in Lightning, we've got faster ways to mill ourselves out or a little bit more uh, reliable access to self-mill to speed up both Nyx and X-Death. And on top of that, we get to play Regis, the slightly forgotten rare from Opus 15 that makes all of our King's Glaives cheaper while being a very sticky threat himself. So if you like that previous deck, please check out this one as an alternative. And as always, there is a list in the description. The King's Glaives package is identical to the previous one, exactly the same, 24 cards. You could top up some of the two ofs to three ofs if you just want an ever so slightly faster Nyx, but a lot of the time I feel like that's cutting into your backup name diversity and a lot of the time you don't actually get faster hands by turning some of those two ofs to three ofs. So I'll rattle through these because they were in the previous video, but for anyone who's unfamiliar, Axis is a powerful self-milling tool that can also be a little bit of regression. Libertus is one of the high-end threats we can pull out of the deck for Nexus effect and also on entry you get to take back some stuff from break zone to hand. Crow is another piece of break zone interaction that you can crack to dull down your opponent's stuff to push for lethals or uh, prevent a point of damage and also take back something when she dies from break zone. Pelna is the only other Kingslave backup we're playing three copies of, a very versatile and very cheap little guy that can make your field a little bit bigger if you desperately need it. Two copies a piece of Sonitus and Lush, or Lushe, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but either way, these crack to break one of your opponent's forwards, but your opponent gets, uh, I guess you'd say, some kind of benefit out of it as well. Only two copies because I don't expect to need these especially proactively. Three copies of Tread as a small thing that can occasionally sneak through points of damage, but realistically is here to save your more important cards from removal or win combat trades that your opponent's going to have to do odd things to play around. And then two copies of the other Nyx, the one that looks a bit like Ryan Reynolds, because on entry you get to sacrifice a King's Glaive, could be himself, to blow up your opponent's stuff. While Glaives is very good at uh, dulling down your opponent's things and making a wild field, a uh, wild? Uh, I was meant to say a wide field, but a wild field kind of works as well, doesn't it? So uh, yeah, uh, Nyx, Nyx is good at taking care of high value forwards your opponent might play early. Uh, this deck is fine with being swarmed, but it doesn't particularly like seeing a 10 Zen turn 1 or something, so Nyx is in the deck as a bit of an answer to that. As a non-Kingsglaive, but definitely goes with all of the Kingsglaives, we've got Noctis as another high value target we can pull out of the deck with Nyx, and it makes combat a lot easier for us to win by just dulling down our opponent's stuff so they can't block our 3 or 4 points of damage on the important turn. Onto the stuff that makes this deck unique. Three copies of Regis, the cost to cast all of your job Kingsglaive is reduced by one. This is an absolutely enormous gain. Nyx for two, Crow for two, and Pelna for free because he's already one CP cheaper if you control another FF15 character. These are all really big thresholds. Also Axis for two, realistically everything. And there's, there's also not a cannot become zero clause here. So Tread as well being free is quite extreme. Also, whenever Regis is targeted by an effect, you can sack a King's Glaive to basically protect the King. And uh, yeah, uh, I think that it depends. You should be careful about doing this because it does suck to lose a backup if you were really needing that backup for CP. And we have slightly less backups in this deck because, well, the next backup I'm about to show you is a little bit of a self-milling tool that can help you find more backups anyway. But just be careful that you've uh, considered everything fully, whether you're going to go through with Regis's auto ability or not. Another big draw to playing Mono Lightning Glaives is Nath. Nath on entry, 4 CP backup might seem a little bit steep, but you get to look at the top two cards of your deck and add a Lightning card, which is 100% of the deck, to your hand, and then mill the other card. 
a lot of the time this is going to be win-win for us. We get a bit of card selection, we can add the more interesting card to our hand, but whatever else we are milling, the odds are high that it's going to be a character, the odds are quite high it's going to be a Kingsclave, that benefits Xdeath for filling the grave, that benefits Nyx for filling our grave, and it benefits Axis, I suppose, in a way as well, for being able to see more cards and make more informed decisions. Another big draw to playing Lightning in the deck is the Lightning Summons happen to be in a really good place. Lightning has never really had bad summons, but uh, I feel like right now in the meta, Lightning Summons are very well positioned. Three copies of Ramu, I just think it's one of the best cards in the game just now. Very good for a deck that has an aggressive mode, being able to find uh, lethals in ways that you couldn't before. Killing a forward and dulling another forward is usually a good way of saying your opponent doesn't get to block this turn. Two copies of Ixion. I wanted to play this in my previous list, but it was just very hard to keep the earth quantity high enough. Ixion is strong in this deck because so little of the deck costs two or less, and uh, a remarkably low amount of the deck even costs three or less. So Ixion is quite often going to be a one-sided board wipe against certain things. And because this deck is very good at pushing our opponent to five, I think two copies of a drama serves us well as well. One CP to deal 6,000 damage to an active forward is already good for doing things like killing Cyan against Samurais before they go to combat, or killing a twin that's been around for a turn in the twins deck, although Exion's very good against them as well. But when your opponent's on 5 damage, 9,000 for 1 CP is just amazing, a very, very good deal. To take even better advantage of the selection of summons, two copies of Man in Black. I do feel like we slightly miss out on Cindy as an explosive searcher in this deck. That is the one thing that I do really miss from the Earth Lightning list. So we've got a couple of copies of Aldo to approximate that. This deck plays very differently when you're able to get and stick one of these copies of Nyx in the early game. Although I imagine there will be some hands as well that are just trivialised by Aldo searching for Regis and then Regis sticking to the field for a turn and uh, making everything that much deeper. In a Mono Lightning list, it's hard not to play one copy of Sakura. So long as you pay for her using Mono Lightning CP, you get to break a forward of cost four or less on entry, and that is a vast majority of the competitive metagame. Last couple of cards, it's a card I didn't rate particularly highly before, but it's at its absolute best in Kingsclaves. That is Ravana, the Primal. So Ravana is the savior of the Nath. That's those uh, curious little backups. I, I've not played any FF14 yet to know really what these are. But uh, yeah, Ravana is an odd card. It's kind of metagame dependent. Right now, there are a lot of fire decks going around. I think Hien and Samurai in particular is one of the easiest decks to get into the format with. And Ravana happens to be rather difficult for fire decks to kill. So it's a little bit of a metagame techie slot. Ravana's gimmick is that he can attack four times each turn if you can find ways to activate him. And he activates whenever a character dies. When we've got so many characters that can sacrifice themselves for some kind of benefit, it's actually quite easy for Ravana to attack four times in a turn or even just a couple of times to get you closer to the magic Adramale sweet spot I suppose. So that is Mono Lightning Glaives. One last reminder there is a deck list in the description. One last reminder that your subscriptions and your likes and comments mean a great deal to us and they keep us uh, warm in the winter months. So thank you very much for watching. This has been Steve D. Please stay tuned for a lot more deck tech talks coming soon.